Hey, what's up, everybody? It's, it's Josh. I'm crippled today, I'll be honest. I'm pretty stoned, so I'm going to try to read you this book about ethics, or at least this chapter, because I wanted to explain virtue. Something I've talked about in some of my videos. Kind of put it in a context that people can understand. Because I found this really interesting. And, uh... <clears throat> So I'm pretty stoned because I just got back from the dentist and I had my teeth drilled and it hurts and it's all numb. So here I am making a video. <laughs> it's this chapter called Virtue Ethics and it's the nature and kinds of virtue. And I've talked about natural law, but it's hard to understand. And natural law includes like the law of karma, which is much more complicated than just do bad and bad happens karmic process is cyclical and you go you recur through the same problems until you solve them everything that happens in your life multiplies and this this will sum it up much better than I could the nature and kinds of virtue in general virtue is an excellence of some sort originally our word virtue meant strength from the Latin vir and referred to manliness in Aristotle's ethics, the term used for what we translate as virtue was arete. It referred to excellences of various types. According to Aristotle, there are two basic types of excellence, or virtues, intellectual virtues and moral virtues. Intellectual virtues are excellence of mind, such as the ability to understand and reason and judge well. Aristotle said these traits are learned from teachers. Moral virtues dispose us to act well. These virtues are learned not by being taught, but by repetition. For instance, by practicing courage or honesty, we become more courageous and honest. Just as repetition in musical, uh, playing a musical instrument makes playing easier, so also repeated acts of honesty make it the virtue of honesty to find it easier to be honest than the person who does not have that virtue. It has become second nature to him or her. The same thing applies to the opposite of virtue, namely vice. The person who lies and lies again finds that lying is easier and telling the truth more difficult. One can have bad moral habits, vices, as well as good ones, virtues. Just like other bad habits, bad moral habits are difficult to change or break. And that's what I'm talking about with when you build a certain, I guess, a, build yourself up a certain way. It's, it's continual and repetitive, and it magnifies itself and multiplies. It's like everything in excess if it's practiced too often. I'll go on. Philosophers have listed and classified virtues and vices differently. Aristotle's list of virtues includes courage, temperance, justice, pride, and magnanimity. However, Aristotle is probably most well known for his position that virtue is a mean between extremes. Thus, the virtue of courage is to be thought of as a man or middle between, as a mean or middle between the two extremes of deficiency and excess. Too little courage is cowardice, and too much is foolhardiness. We should have neither too much fear when facing danger or challenges, making us unable to act, nor too little fear, making us throw all caution to the wind, as we say. Courage is having just the right amount of fear, depending on what is appropriate for us as individuals and for the circumstances we face. So also, the other virtues are means between extremes. For our own list today might differ from this. Our example, we might include loyalty and honesty in our list. If loyalty is a virtue, can there be such a thing as too little loyalty or too much loyalty? What about honesty? Too much honesty might seem, be seen as undisciplined openness, and too little as deceitfulness. Would the right amount of honesty be forthrightness? In other words, not all virtues may rightly be thought of as a mean between extremes. If justice is a virtue, could there be a such a thing as being too just or too little just? We could exemplify this view with the childhood story of Goldilocks. When she entered the bear's house, she ate the porridge that was not too hot and not too cold, but just right. We might think that Aristotle's list reflected what we consider civic virtues of his day. Our list would reflect our times. The contemporary moral philosopher, uh, Alistair McIntyre, believes that the virtues depend at least partly on the practices that constitute a culture or society. A warlike society will have 
that will value heroic virtues while the peaceful and prosperous society might think of generosity as a particularly important virtue. To be consistent in his own natural law ethics, there must be virtue specific to human, humans, human beings as human, for otherwise one could not speak of human excellences. So, anyway, it's just interesting, something to ponder. just thought I, I found it a little interesting when I read it. Of course, I didn't read it all the way through. It gets kind of boring towards the end. But uh, that whole part about the middle ground, I mean, that's what it's really all about for the most part. And that was a good point about justice. You know, can you have too much justice? I don't know. That's, that's, that's for each person to figure out on their own. But uh, there, there is a middle to walk for, for most things to keep good virtues and good balance. Good judgment, moral character. You can't be always negative. You can't be always positive. And that's that's the balance. That's that's the extremes, and that's the mean between the extremes. So, anyway, namaste. Peace out.